Welcome back to our F1 2020 Ferrari Return to Glory career mode. If you didn't see the last episode, I highly suggest you go back and watch it right now, mainly because I don't think you'll believe the sentence I'm about to tell you otherwise. George Russell won the last race then, the Monaco Grand Prix, and he's up to 9th place in the standings. Uh, our teammate Charles Leclerc then still leads the way, he was one of the only top drivers who actually had a good result in that race. It's actually allowed Fiat to move up to second in the standings incredibly. Now then, we are going to keep on pushing forward with upgrades then, and um, we're going to go for, them for a reliability upgrade because obviously we're still a bit tight on some of our engine parts. We've also got that chassis upgrade which obviously we couldn't get for Monaco but we'll have that now. And we always keep on moving forward then, quite a few weeks then until the next race, but we do get that durability upgrade on the car then. So yeah, this season has just been absolutely crazy so far, we've got Canada coming up now and here yeah, then is that big chassis upgrade that we've got on the car then, so hopefully that will help us this weekend then. And you can see we've made another big step then. Uh, Rebel also making a bit of a step there as well when Mercedes have still done basically nothing all season. So it's getting really tight at the top there. Racing Point are tr just trying to cling on to us as well there. So it could be a potentially quite close weekend then. And well, we need a good result then because obviously we were only 14th in that last race. And would you believe it, it's going to rain yet again then. So yeah, we're just getting all the wet races so far this season. This is going to be the fourth one already then in, in only round six so yeah it's just a, a little bit stupid not gonna lie but qualifying then is going to be completely dry now it does to be fair look like it's going to be quite a brief shower then we're going to start and finish in dry conditions by the look of things as we're now going to finally then move on to all of our second engine parts here then we will we'll still use the old energy store then for practice sessions and then switch over to the new one for qualifying as we gain some more resource points there then. We've got a nice chunk at the moment, so we'll look to get another upgrade on the car as well then. Obviously we still are playing a bit of catch up with the engine, so this is where uh, this next upgrade is going to go then into that. And yeah, we'll hopefully continue then to keep on uh, making some good progress with that then. Moving on now to qualifying then for the Canadian Grand Prix, and we'll see what kind of result we can get then. We didn't do too well here last season from what I remember, so hopefully we'll have a much better time of it. Uh, this time around, obviously, we are looking a lot better than in terms of our uh, car upgrades then, so uh, we should hopefully be up there, and we want to obviously, as I said, um, get a good result here because obviously we didn't do well at all in Monaco, not scoring any points, but Leclerc's going well, and the team overall is going well in the constructors, so we really want to keep on just you know getting as many good results as we can. The Q1, though, was quite edgy because we were only 10th, and... Leclerc only 14th in the end so need to up our game a bit here then as for the second race in a row then the winner of the previous race goes out in Q1 there then although not exactly a surprise there to see George Russell dropping out there in 17th position in the Williams um, but as we now move on now then to uh, Q2 and we certainly need to do a little bit better here then in this session because yeah things weren't looking entirely comfortable in that uh, first session but then that was quite unusual was that we were actually faster than Leclerc there so um, yeah well you'd imagine that he'll have a bit more to find then but obviously we did see him get knocked out in Q2 back in Monaco as well so uh, yeah maybe just having a little bit of a slump there but hopefully he'll be back on form and hopefully we can get in the top 10 as well here then as when I come into the line then science has set a 108.3 and we have also set 108.3 and gone fast then but as you can see, we're only ninth then at the moment, so we need to go out again then for this final run. I think the Mercedes and Verstappen were on mediums initially as well, so yeah, they'll certainly be improving as well there then. So um, yeah, we still need to go out then for the second run here then, and um, yeah, try and improve our time if we can. We're nearly two tenths up at the moment then, so we're on for a good improvement at the moment then. Into the chicane though, and we've just slightly gone over track limits just as we were also bumped out of the top ten there then, so... That's it, qualifying's over for us. I kept on pushing on this lap because I wanted to see just how quick this lap would have been, but I'm pretty sure that last season we did the exact same thing on the exact same corner, so that is very frustrating that we've done that two seasons in a row, and, well, two seasons in a row, it has, well, ruined our qualifying there, basically, as we're down in 14th place by the looks of things. Leclerc is in the drop zone, but he has actually just pulled himself out of it then to the line, and our time, I think, would have 
got us through there. Obviously, you do have to factor in that we did track extend, but it was very slight there. So I don't know how much difference it actually made there, but I would have thought that that would get us through there and into the shootout that lap we were on there. So that is a huge shame. 14th on the grid for us, and we've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Thankfully, it is a bit easier to pass here than it is at Monaco, but yeah, that is certainly um, a huge disappointment for us there. Then Arcon, Fiat, Norris, and Grosjean joined us then going out in that session, and obviously Leclerc then beats us in the rivalry for that uh, session there then. So yeah, he's sort of edging a bit further ahead with that one then. Um, we actually lose a little bit of our driver claim as well there, which is um, surprising. So not a good session for us at all then. We've got it all to do tomorrow. And uh, well, we've also got a bit of rain to deal with as well then, of course, because it is going to rain quite early on in the race then for a, a brief shower. So we'll see how much that actually mixes up the race because it does look like we're going to have quite a long patch of dry weather um, in the second part of the race. So yeah, it could be another very eventful race then. We've had five different winners from five different teams so far. Could we see six different winners from six different teams? Well, Mercedes haven't won a race yet, so that could well happen then. But after wait and see, let's head into the Canadian Grand Prix. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to a variant of this track back in 1978. It was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. It's one of the fastest races of the season here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, with around 60% of this 2.7 mile circuit taken at full throttle. There are 14 corners to navigate, the very last of which has its very own infamous history. Could be the cause of a safety car today. Anthony Davidson also joins me in the commentary box today. Let's talk about the scientists. They're starting towards the back of the field today in a car that is fast. So they'll be disappointed, won't they? It's not a nice feeling, I promise you. They've got a quick car underneath them, but they've got onto the grid today and they need a pair of binoculars to see the start lights. They'll be desperate for a good start to make up for some of that deficit. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Leclerc, Alexander Albon, and Ricardo, Perez, Stroll, Gasly, and Carlos Sainz. Ocon, Kvyat, Lando Norris, The Scientist, Grosjean, Giovinazzi, George Russell, and Kevin Magnussen. Raikkonen and Nicholas Latifi. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Looks like the uh, tyre wear is quite high here then because they have gone for a two-stop strategy for us then, although they could well be thinking about the weather there with that strategy, I'm not sure. Uh, well, we're starting on the soft tyres then, and well, it would be two medium stints then, but presumably there will probably be inters in the middle of that somewhere as well because that rain is forecast then for um, sometime quite early on in the race then, so we'll have to wait and see just when it comes. And in fact, it has already started then. We're on the warm-up lap and it is already starting to rain here, so that could make the start very interesting then, depending on uh, how quickly the track gets wet here then. But, well, we're, it's already raining then on the formation lap, so, um, so you have to watch out for that then. It's another lap will be on the dry tyres for very long here. As we're coming to the grid now then, and uh, yeah, we're not going to be waiting very long then for lights once we get to the grid here then. Because uh, yeah, just six cars behind us then, the two Hasses, two Alfa Romeos and two Williams then. And we'll be ready to start this race. As we're all lined up now then on the grid and the lights are coming on now. And away we go. And it's a pretty good start from us then. But just the problem here is that the track is so narrow that it's hard for us to really make any progress here as we nearly run into the back of Ocon there in the Renault. We're alongside Norris and we've got the inside line for turn two here. It looks like we may just have done enough here then to get the move done. As we have gone, we're going to have the inside line in for turn three here and yeah, we've done enough then to get through. But we're also just trying to make sure we don't run into any cars in front of us because as I said it's just so narrow around here and we, well, we couldn't make any more progress there then. Uh, but at least we have made up one position there, so uh, yeah, it's a decent start for us then. Heading into the hairpin now, and it's all bunched up once again. 
and um, yeah, right on the back then still a lock on here then so hopefully with a good run here down the uh, back straight towards the far chicane we can get a good run here then and it does look like we've got a good run then with overtake and uh, I think we're using a bit of rich mix there as well it's going to be quite tight here into the far chicane with side by side we bang wheels there but we've done enough then to get through we apparently did go over track limits there but uh, well we managed to get through other uh, suffering any damage thankfully and we did take the place there as we see then a replay of the start and it uh, looked like there wasn't really much change going on throughout the field to be honest it looked like it was um, sort of as it was then from the grid order uh, everyone going two by two through turns one and two there uh, we managed to get the place at least off of Norris but yeah it doesn't look like there was much change other than some cars gaining and losing a position there we see then the start on board from Norris and we were just very quick there certainly ran to the back of the Renault in front of us but thankfully just about managed to slow ourselves down here Norris then trying to hang out out on the outside there but once we had the inside line here for turn three it was always going to be quite hard for him to uh, take back the position there and we in did indeed manage to get through as we see just how close it got there between us there and the Renault um, rear wing there um, from the onboard camera there from Ocon so he was also side by side with I think it's Fiat there up in front of us and then we actually did take Ocon then later on the lap a very tight move here then bit of wheel banging bit of uh, track extending but we managed to get the move done then up into 12th position now as the rain is really starting to come down then already and we have a big slide there at the hairpin so I can't imagine it's going to be too long then until the rain comes because we've got Norris then right on the back of us he's also made his way past um, Ocon then and he's having a good run in the snow then because obviously we completely messed up the hairpin but thankfully we did about just about enough then to hold on to our position there but to get the McLaren driver still all over the back of us then as DRS is enabled then uh, but yeah, the rain is just continuing to come down here then as we are uh, in behind Danny Fiat then in the Alpha Tauri uh, D As I said then DRS still enabled so we're gonna go for the move here then uh, if we can But he's also got DRS then so yeah, we're just not gaining anywhere near enough there down that straight to actually make the move and uh, Yeah, big slide there again out of the fall Well, two big slides out of the fall she came there then and well, we're getting a call from the team there, but uh, well, they did it just before we ended the lap, so we'll have a look then at the strategy. And yeah, they are saying for the previous lap, lap three, then um, they wanted us to pit, so obviously we'll just pit on this lap instead then for our stop because they gave us the call way too late. Skipping to a little bit later on the lap, and they're actually now uh, calling us for another strategy change. And well, now they're saying lap five, so I mean, just yet again, they're telling us to do an extra lap when. The track is clearly getting too wet to actually be on these tyres, so... I mean, I don't know what they're thinking. I mean, do they just hate us, or is this just how, you know, the Fry strategies, uh, strategist mind work or something? I don't know, but... Well, you'd think that most cars will be in on this lap then, because DRS is now disabled. Um, our teammates in then... Uh, one of the Mercedes has actually stayed out there by the looks of things, so I guess... We're not the only ones, in, in fact Fiat then continues in front of us as well then, obviously we continue as well because that's what the team said, but uh, well we've got Science in, Gasly, Leclerc, Verstappen, Perez, Norris, Bottas, so I guess it's Hamilton that stayed out there, so is Albon. Uh, I guess the teams maybe just think that stacking here isn't a good option or something, the pit lane is quite small, I'm not sure, but in any case then this is going to be a very difficult lap then and well we're struggling a lot more than Fiat by the looks of things. Now the team are, stri uh, are suggesting the exact same strategy that they just gave us for some reason uh, as Bottas goes through so we're already a whole pit stop behind the race lead there so that's lovely there and Verstappen is now coming through as well then as we approach the hairpin we're so cautious on the brakes and in fact we've been hit from behind there and going into Verstappen and we've spun round uh, we're going to recover it Ricardo is involved as well he's broken his front wing by the looks of things but well we've lost positions there to Leclerc uh, of the stop and went through obviously and we thankfully didn't get any damage here but Perez is coming through as well and well our race is just falling apart here we at least didn't get any damage but we've lost so much time now and we're going to come in finally to pit for intermediate tyres but well yeah our car's not damaged but damage has very much been done already then to our race here because well we've got so much ground to make up now then uh, obviously we were really struggling for that lap on the dry tyres and then just throwing in a spin now as well so yeah this is all falling apart for us then very early on in this race 
Now as we're going to rejoin them in about 16th position here then, although there's yellow flags up in front and it's actually Carlos Sainz there who's pulled off at turn one. So he's out of the race then for the second race in a row then with some kind of mechanical issue by the looks of things. As we're right on the back then of Latifi and the Williams, so we have, our race has been completely ruined there then, down in 15th position. Now we've got a lot of work to do now then, and we'll see when, what happened down at the hairpin. Well, it was actually Norris right into the back because Aaron pushed us into the Verstappen. And then Ricardo charged in behind as well, Perez, Breitling all dodging as well. And then in fact Sainz also broke his front wing in as well there. Obviously we saw him stop only a few corners later, but he also got himself involved in that as well. As we see then towards the hairpin, well the soft tire runners then obviously being very cautious, but I guess uh, Norris not cautious enough there and he ran into the back of us. He actually hit both me and Leclerc there, but thankfully neither of us got any damage. And we see here then Ricardo. Uh, well, surely he could have avoided that then on intermediate tyres, but he just drove straight into the back of Norris there as well, and then Sainz hit him for good measure. And in fact, Perez actually got a penalty here for overtaking under yellow flags, and this is where it was then. Either side of Ricardo there, and he overtakes Raikkonen when the yellow flags out start. Got him a five second penalty there uh, for the racing point driver. And then just a few corners later, Carlos Sainz, uh, you can see he's got broken front wing there, but. Uh, yeah, he yeah for the second race in a row then has had some kind of mechanical issue, and that is his race over. So yeah, very unlucky for him there. As we are now skipping then to later on in that lap where we're going to now pass Latifi then for 14th place then. So yeah, we've got quite a bit of a fight back to do yet again then, just as we did in Monaco. And uh, well, at least it'll be a little bit easier to overtake here then. Uh, well, without risking some damage, but. Um, yeah, we passed Latifi then, we've got Giovinazzi next then, so hopefully we can pass him quite straightforward here then. Bit of an ambitious move there on the brakes, but we managed to slow it down, so um, yeah, we're through then and up into 13th position there, so slowly starting to make a bit of progress back then, but still such a long way back from uh, some decent positions here. As we see what's happening at the front then, and Bottas for once this season is having things go his way then, he's up in the lead of the race then. Verstappen second, Leclerc in third, and Hamilton then. He also stayed out a lot longer on the dry tyres and he has dropped to four, so not getting too great for him, but certainly going well for uh, Bottas and for once this season he is leading the race at the moment. As we now catch up to the back then of Roman Grosjean here then in the Haas, and we are now actually getting the call to go back on to slick tyres here then because the rain has stopped and the track is drying up already then, so it was a very brief stint then that we had, well, very brief shower, I just say. And uh, yeah, well, it was quite a brief stint on the intermediate tyres as well. So it does look like we're actually going to be going back to the, uh, the original uh, strategy that we had then for this race. So yeah, two medium tyre stints, and that will take us to the end of the race by the looks of things. As we see then, uh, German Nazi in there then, and Stroll and Kofi have been held up big time there then, because uh, yeah, we've actually gained places in all this, and we're up to 12th position here. So we've taken two positions there in the pits by the looks of things, I think. Right on that, she stayed out on the intermediate tyres there, so um, yeah, we've only gained one place technically, but obviously it's two overall because Raikkonen will surely be in again then. As we see a replay then of Stroll here then, and well, he had to wait behind his teammates, so yeah, maybe this is why, you know, some of the teams didn't want to stack up on that first round of stops. As we see then, just uh, Stroll waiting for such a long time and then has to wait for the queue as well coming down the pit lane, and yeah, lost all that time. We were miles behind uh, Stroll and we yeah, managed to overtake him there then. Uh, Raikkonen now then is the last car in Intermediate still to pit and then he pits there. So we're up into 11th place and suddenly it's not looking too bad for us then. We're not too far off some points positions here. Obviously we've got Grosjean right in front of us but there's another few cars then just up the road as well. As in towards turn 1 here then we're quite ambitious here on the brakes. A bit of wheel banging but thankfully we managed to... Avoid any damage by the looks of things, and we're up into 10th position. So, a bit of an ambitious move there, but I think we just really had to go for it here then and just get on with our race. Uh, as we see it again, then it was a very late move then, so you know, Grosjean turned in there not as bad as you know, some of the other AI moves I've seen on some occasions. But we're up into the points then, and speaking of being up in the points, look who is there again then, George Russell up in eighth place, the hero from Monaco, and he, he's on for. Uh, some more points here today then, as um, we're looking at Ocon now then, but the problem is that he also has DRS here, so it's quite hard to actually get close enough here to actually make a move. 
as we skipped lap 16 where we're still stuck in behind him and now we've got a DRS fault so got everything that wants to go wrong today is going wrong and we're sliding about here and it's actually because our DRS is stuck open that's the problem so yeah it really is just all going wrong for us today then I, I, mean, I don't know how we're going to drive like this now I do say that I don't pit unless the team tell me to or they suggest a new strategy but they did say that if I pitted here well they did say to pit to fix the problem so I was thinking I can't drive like this so I will just pit here and get them to fix it um, which I would, I would assume they would just do here then in the pit stop so in we come we'll see what happens but our rear wing and well it's it closed by like <laughs> one degree or something uh, but it's still stuck open so we just pitted there for no reason basically because we've still got a damaged DRS here and I don't know how we're going to drive like this but we're just going to have to try and do it then we are now going to the end then according to our strategy so at least we won't have to pit again apparently but can we even drive like this I mean it will be quite easy to make some overtakes now then I guess maybe and um, we are just about managing to well drive our car then without you know spinning off here so this may well actually work out in our favour then as we pass Raikkonen and then into turn one and we're well we're second last now then we're not last and uh, as we were when we came out of the pits there but uh, yep still a lot of work to do now then but obviously you know we don't have to pay again so we will gain some places back then hopefully later on as we can see though we're just sliding about so much then with this rear wing stuck open um, but obviously it is helping us down to some of these straights where you wouldn't normally have DRS there so that's helping us to pass Magnus in a little bit of contact there with Ricardo in front of us but thankfully we managed to get away without any damage there and now we're just reeling in the uh, running driver then uh, down towards the fast chicane here then he's gone defensive we're going to go to the inside line anyway a bit of wheel banging once again there then uh, side by side once again with the Renault through the fast chicane but we managed to make it stick this time without uh, exceeding track limits and we're up into 16th position now I think maybe I just pulled a little bit to the left there to open the uh, angle up a little bit better for the corner there but yeah I think I just I think I sort of initiated the contact there rather than him moving across I think it was me that sort of moved left into him uh, to sort of cause that little bit of contact there but didn't seem to cause any damage thankfully as we are running outside there Norris in the hairpin and then just with DRS then right away on, on the exit we were just easily uh, pulling away from him there then and up into 15th position and we're right on the tail of Latifi now then once again so hopefully we'll have yeah, two cars then in two straights here, and we are, yeah, looks like we're going to do it then, up the inside, uh, into 14th place, we've got DRS, well, we've got a fast lap, I should say, because our rear wing is stuck open, we're on the whole lap, and yeah, we're just getting so much of an advantage on the straights now, uh, we're, and we're just, well, we're doing enough then to hang on to the car in some of the uh, faster corners, so yeah, it's actually helping us at the moment then to really get through this pack here as we are on the back then of Joe and Atsi now he's going really defensive there but we should have the move done then by the time we reach the chicane here and indeed we do then up into 13th position and uh, yeah 8 seconds down into Stroll and Kafiat who we obviously jumped the first time around in the pits and they are, are they are obviously still going to be pitting then in this race as we see now then Kafiat and Grosjean in and Ocon as well there so and Russell as well in fact so that's a whole host of cars then that we've actually jumped in the pits then from pitting earlier Obviously we weren't meant to, but I thought that the team would fix my DRS if I pitted, so that was obviously the only reason I came in there. And uh, yeah, that puts it then into ninth place. And in fact, I didn't notice at the time, but my DRS actually just fixed itself right there. Uh, here's the replay then, going through actually again, and then, yeah, it just shuts itself finally. And yeah, we're back to normal now. So yeah, we're not going to be OP then down the uh, straights anymore, but at least we may, well, well we should have a bit more uh, rear grip now thankfully as we are up into 8th place and Gasly rejoins just behind us and now this is where it might get a bit difficult because we've been on these tyres for quite a few laps now then Gasly's on fresh tyres so we may well struggle actually to keep him behind us and obviously we want to do that because well yeah believe it or not uh, Alfa Tari are our closest challenges in the constructors at the moment so yeah we want to try and keep him behind if we can as we are up to 7th place now then because I think Stroll was the last Hard to pit there then for a second, well a third time I guess in this race. Uh, would it be third? Yes it is I think. 
And um, yeah, Gazi then is all over the back of Snell then, as we've got Albon in the pits uh, in front of us as well, but I think he is going to rejoin just in front of us. Uh, it could be quite close over here, but Gasly, this is going to be close then towards turn one. He's at the inside, he's in front, but we've done about just enough there then to uh, hang it out right on the outside and then get the inside line for turn two there. So we're doing just about enough here then to hang on to the opposition, but yeah, it's getting very, uh, very difficult here then to hang on to this position here because yeah, Gasly then on the fresh tyres is looking very quick here. And uh, yeah, they just look strong all season to be fair. Obviously uh, up in second in the constructors we have a snap of oversteer and that's first in the wall. And that is quite a bit of front wing damage that we've got there. It, it could be quite hard to, uh, hard to hang on to this in for the final eight laps. And the team are suggesting then a new strategy here. So yeah, we are going to pit then. We're going to have to pit because yeah, this front wing damage then is going to be too much to carry through to the end. As we see then the replay, Gasly nearly got the place off us there. But well, he only had to wait another half a lap because we just had a snap of oversteer on the exit there. As I said, our tyres were quite a few laps older than, uh, than Gasly. So um, yeah, we were starting to lose him quite a bit then. And uh, yeah, just that little snap there. We did too much of a correction and we just flicked it the other way and went into the barriers there. And yeah, just everything that wanted to go wrong today is going wrong. We're going to pit now then, and this will probably drop us out of the points then. And it's going to be quite hard for us to actually recover anything now then. We will be on fresh soft tyres though, so we may well have a chance if we can just go, you know, full speed to the end of the race here. But yeah, it's going to be quite difficult then. We're going to be down in third, 14th place then by the looks of things. I think it's going to be quite tight here with Norris. We may well just do enough here to... Uh, get out up in front of him here and we do indeed then so it's 14th position we're quite way off the points but we'll see what we can do then with fresh soft tyres uh, just going flat out to the end of the race here then because they will go the distance quite comfortably here passing Giovinazzi and for some reason I forgot to open my DRS for some reason so yeah well done me I think I also said for some reason twice there so I don't know why I did that but yeah we're through then and uh, yeah, we're only three seconds then behind Grosjean and Fiat, so we could catch them by the end of the race. As we've got yellow flags up in front, and it's because Valtteri Bottas, the pole sitter and race leader, is out of the race there. Wow. I mean, this season just goes from bad to worse for him. There he is, parked at the side of the road on the exit of turn two. And wow, that is unbelievable then. And what that has done is given us a chance of scoring some points today then, because... Yeah, that's Kofiat out to 10th and he's only just up the road, so we have a very good chance now then of actually catching him before the end of this race. We see that in the replay, Bartas was under pressure from Leclerc here and also Hamilton just behind. Uh, it looks like an engine blow out there and oh, this this terrible total defence for Valtteri Bartas just gets even worse. He was on course to turn it all around today and get that win and well, he's lost it. And well, this time through absolutely no fault of his own, although to be fair, Quite a few of them haven't been his fault then, you know, different strategy uh, problems and that. But, yeah, Leclerc, I'm very cautious there, thinking about the championship. And had Mercedes lost a win for the sixth time this season, incredibly. Well, Hamilton's right on the back of Leclerc, so they may still salvage it, but... God, that, that, what a season we're having here then, and just... I don't think anyone could have predicted how badly this would go for both Mercedes and for Valtteri Bottas here. Um, as I said, though, this is giving us a real chance here of scoring some points here. We're up the inside of Grosjean. We have just taken the fastest lap as well, so if we do get into the top 10 here, then it's actually going to be worth two points for us, assuming we can also hold on to this fastest lap here. And to be honest, we should, because we're the only driver on fresh soft tyres at the moment, so uh, yeah, no one should beat this uh, lap time then. So all we have to do now then is uh, pass Fiat then in the uh, final lap that we've got remaining here in a bit here we'll have two chances down this long DRS straight towards the pasture game as well as the uh, run down to turn one as well uh, it doesn't matter that we're going to need it then because yeah we just power past the uh, Alpha Tari there then up into 10th place and well it's certainly been a day to forget for us but we are going to salvage something then by the looks of things thankfully we're two seconds behind Russell but I don't think we're going to quite catch him uh, on to the final lap though and this is Hamilton and Leclerc side by side for the win on the final lap and it looks like Hamilton then uh, well he has sort of he sort of softened the blow there for Mercedes because 
they lost the win with Bottas, but it does look like they are going to finally get their win this season then because he has made it through then past Leclerc into Turn 1 on the final lap of the race there. And we are going to get six winners from six different teams from six races. Even 2012 didn't manage that because obviously Red Bull won uh, two races in the first six, even though it was six different drivers. Leclerc there, maybe thinking about the championship, seemed quite cautious there through turns one and two. And uh, yeah, he didn't uh, manage to put up enough of a fight there to keep Hamilton behind. And we didn't quite do enough then to get within DRS range of Russell here, so we are going to finish this race in 10th by looks of things. But as I said, with everything that went wrong today, we will take that, and also we're going to take an extra point for Vassar's lap as well then. We cross the line, it's 10th place in Canada. That's the end of the race, we'll see you in Park Ferme. That's it for another Grand Prix and a fantastic win for Mercedes. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton finally have their race win this season and they, they were behind AlphaTauri Williams racing point in doing it but they have finally got their win this season then and I don't even know if that's ever even happened six winners from six different teams in the first six races so that is incredible there Leclerc the championship leader with another strong result there in second Verstappen third a good weekend there for Perez up in fourth Albon, he desperately needed a good result there, and but he got a decent one there in fifth. Another good weekend there for Gazi as well, up in sixth. He was really putting the pressure on us there, and it actually pressured us into a crash there, of course. Russell once again in the points there, up in ninth place. So, yeah, back-to-back -back point scores there for the Monaco Grand Prix winner. We salvaged then two points in tenth, and uh, yeah, looking further down then. Science retired early on and Bottas then still classified four laps down but yeah he was he got pole he led most of the race and then he's going to end up once again with nothing there. In the driver's standings then Charles Leclerc still leads away and he's got a 16 point lead over Lewis Hamilton then so he's still looking quite good there up at the top. Verstappen then 27 behind. Kvyat then slides down to fourth and is 29 behind, uh, back. And uh, yeah, Perez Gasly still just about in it. We're there as well, 43 behind. So we do need a good result sooner rather than later then if we're going to stay in it. Valtteri Bottas though, still 12th place in the standings. 69 points. It's certainly not nice for him at all at the moment then. And uh, yeah, he's done in 12th place. Albon is 13th. Overtaken Reichland today. But yeah, he certainly needs to build on that result today then if he's going to, you know, get anything from the season because... Yeah, that's saying not where he should be and saying not obviously where Bottas should be either then. Uh, looking further down, Stroll got some points today and incredibly, st he's still only 17th in the standings. So, yeah, there's just shocks all through the, all through the table at the, moment, at the moment. Obviously, because of that mo crazy Monaco result, uh, we still lead the way though in the Constructors and it's still AlphaTauri up in second place then, despite the win for Mercedes today. They're in third, Red Bull are fourth. Racing point, then move up to fifth at what is the, obviously the owner's home race then, uh, overtaking both McLaren and Renault today. And obviously, as we saw back in Monaco, Williams are up to eighth place then, and that's Alfa Romeo and Haas rounding up the standings. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. Did you struggle to get through all that traffic today? How do you feel the competition is for you this season?
Did you feel comfortable in the wet weather today? Your teammate had a great race today and was rewarded with a podium. Do you have any comments on their performance? Appreciate your time. Uh, it certainly wasn't a good weekend for us, but I guess it could have been worse in terms of our rivalry. Obviously, we did manage to claw back a point there by getting the fastest lap, so it could have been worse, but Leclerc is certainly looking very good now then to take that rivalry uh, battle there. We did uh, at least gain a decent chunk of a claim then today then with our fight back through the field. And um, I guess our interview questions there probably helped as well, but uh, yeah, certainly not the weekend we wanted, especially as we wanted to fight back after the disappointment of Monaco, but still, this season is still completely up in the air. We're certainly not out of it yet. Um, you know, a bad weekend for our teammate and we could be right back in it. So, uh, yeah, you just don't know the season. But we have a seventh different winner from a seventh different team, where it's looking very unlikely, but we certainly want to be the seventh different driver to win a race then, at the next race, which is in Austria. And, uh, yeah, we'll hopefully have a couple more upgrades then coming at the next race as well. So that is it then. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, really appreciate a like on the video. And hope to see you next time.